to announce that this is being video. I'm going to. I'm just going to. Thank you. Yep. Um, welcome to the February meeting of the Committee on Disabilities. Um, this meeting is being recorded and videotaped. Um, and we'll start with public comments. Are there any members of the public who would like to comment? Name and address. Hand. I'm sorry? June has her hand up. Okay. June. Um, we allow three minutes per comment. She needs to announce her full name and her address. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Can you announce uh, your full name and your address, please? Uh, June Malley, 35 Fruit Street. Okay. Okay. My question is, in past meetings, uh, it was discussed about an audio system. I wonder how, it's, uh, how that is going. Tor, can I address that? Yes, please. Okay, hi, I'm Ruth McGrath. I've been working on that with Patty. We have three quotes now that we're working on. Um, all three of them need to be massaged a little bit. They don't quite meet our needs. Okay. Then we're putting together uh, a, a something for the committee that will have a comparison of the three quotes that we can look at and vote on. But it's, it's actively working as we speak. I was speaking to one of the vendors today. All right, thank so you hopefully so much. for Hopefully for next month we'll have that all put together yeah. so we can look at it. All right, thank you. Councilor, okay. Councilor LaBarge also is working on that committee, the three of us. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think she heard you. Councilor Jim, LaBarge Jim. is also working on that, Jim. Yes. Um, Councilor LaBarge is also on the committee, or the subcommittee looking for um, okay. proper okay. equipment. That was Jim. Okay, so um, now we'll just have introductions. Maybe go around and, and say your name so we know who's here. I'll start. I'm Tori Eklund, and I'm the chair of the Committee on Disabilities. We'll go this way. Me? I'm Susan you. McCreary. I'm the uh, vice chair of the committee. Uh, Ruth McGrath, secretary. Okay, Fortin, did you use a member? Approval of the amendments? No, 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 not yet. Oh, no, oh. We're, just, we're just saying her name. <laughs> Too early. We're glad you're here. Cindy Schubach, a member of the committee. Jim Nash, member of the committee. Terry Pittman, mobility coordinator with PBTA. Nicole Rowan, deputy administrator of operations at PBTA. Sam Wilson, uh, member of the public. Yeah. Oh, Fanny Schultz, a member of the oh. public. June Manley. Mm. City Councilor Marianne LaBarge. Pat Shaughnessy, ADA Coordinator. Okay. And next on the agenda is the approval of the December 18th, 2012 and January 15th, 2013 minutes. So um, does anyone have comments or corrections? Um, I have a comment that um, minutes were reviewed there uh, you all got a copy but mm -hmm. here's like the final copy and it's with a yellow front sheet yeah. so that you can distinguish between the one you got and this one but it's just for the january 15th meeting not, mm -hmm. not for the december meeting yeah. um and i actually have one correction on the december minutes mm -hmm. it says december 18th and it was at the meeting was actually on december 11th Sorry, Tori, I missed that. What did you say? Oh, I said that um, for the December minutes, um, the, it, the minutes say that the meeting was on December 18th, but the meeting actually took place on December 11th. Oh, that's right. We moved it back a week. I'm sorry. It's okay. So it actually happened December 11th? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else... Are we motioning separately? What are we doing here? I can't tell if anybody's six, looking six, it over or not. So, six people who can vote. Okay. And how many? So that's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, are we motioning separately on each set of minutes, or? No. Which Which makes are you motion? voting on right now? The so January fifteenth and December eighteenth. We're after eleven. Eleven. I'm sorry, December eleventh. Mm -hmm. Does somebody want to make a motion? Does, oh, 
I would like to make a motion to approve both the December 11th and January 18th um, minutes. Second? I second. January 15th. January okay. 15th. And Gay, gay seconded. All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Also, I'd like to, and I've talked with Pat Shaughnessy about this, on the minutes, the length of these minutes. Um, I think, Ruth, I gave you a setup on how to do the minutes that we do mostly on all the committees throughout the city, which our council president, Bill Joy, has set up a procedure which makes it much easier to do because it's being videoed and if people want to, they can see that video or come down here just like they can with our council clerk and get any video that they want from any meetings. So what I'm asking is, that we need to shorten these minutes, put down the most important things that are being stated instead of making a whole library out of something. So it saves you time. My problem is I'm trying to second guess myself. Um, That's okay. I did minutes and I did them too short and I was told I was leaving things out so I tried to do them longer and put more things in. I can't seem to hit the magic the bullet of what's too long and what's too short. Right. You we will. can help you with that. Make life I easier. can't make everybody happy is what it amounts to. I'm not getting the right combination here. We'll give you the right so. combination. We'll help you, Ruth, okay? okay. Is there, is, with this um, new initiative by the city council president, is there some sort of training that's going on around how to take minutes and meetings? Yeah, he's also talked with Ruth at our last Social Services and Veterans Affairs Committee mm -hmm. meeting in regards of shortening things. Right. All right, say you brought up an issue, your name would come as a member stating that you had concerns about so-and-so. That would be it, what the issue was. And you wouldn't have to go into anything in details because it's recorded. That and if somebody sense. wants to hear that recording, they can. Right. It's, it's working out beautifully. Okay. It, it saves the person who's writing these minutes a lot sure of time. Finding secretaries to take okay. minutes at meetings oh, is very oh, difficult. Oh. I think Ruth's done a fabulous job. She has. Job. I would agree. And, and she that, sees. Now with this new technology that, you know, that it, it can open it up to other people who don't have your skills. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, now, she sees it even on social services and veterans affairs, right, Ruth? Yeah, I mean, we could write 15 pages, oh, okay, mm -hmm. and we shorten them right down. What Patty will so. have from now on every month is both both the movie yep. and the the video, the video and the audio recordings on the disc, available for everybody, and the the movie, the audio the video recording is available at um, on YouTube at northassoc.org if you want to go look at it every month. This will be up tomorrow. Okay. North mm -hmm. Tube what? Really? North A-S-S-O-C dot org. Great. If you go to YouTube, it's YouTube, U-Y-O-U-T-U-B-E dot com. Okay. Is that under Adam Cohen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So can we move on yes. to the, the update? Of, of, did you want something to say about I just, this? I just, I just wanted to say, um, Ruth, um, we appreciate you doing the minutes. There's you nobody do else likes do. doing minutes. Yeah. So thank yeah. you for that. It's not an easy job. You, you yep. do I agree. Your, you do your best. Mm -hmm. so you do thank you. a great yeah. job. Thank you. I've thank tried you. to get them out the week before the meeting so that they kind of are a reminder that mm -hmm. the meeting's coming up, but I will try and get them out sooner so if things like this happen again, they won't be last minute. Okay. Oh, that's good. Right. So Did you bring you. that up, Patty, that you had concerns about the minutes being given to you in Tory two weeks in advance before our meeting? Well, Ruth and I are going to talk about the time frame for, uh, like, who's doing the agenda, who's doing the minutes, when they have to come in. So, yes, that's part of what Ruth and I will be talking about. Okay. It, it, yes, and who notifies the city clerk and mm -hmm. all of the procedural right. things. Right. So now, um, Patty, can you give us an update about the HP spot at Florida Savings Bank? Yes. Um, so at one point, and I believe it was back in December, um, Ruth McGrath brought up about the handicapped parking space in Florence, mm -hmm. next to Florence Savings Bank, being used by an armored car. And um, she had pictures, and I had been talking to <clears throat> one of the um, 
individuals at Florence Savings Bank, and I just got a uh, sort of a ruling from the Mass Committee on Dis Commission on Disabilities, and the the uh, bank, does, not the bank, but the um, armor car company does not have authorization, or I should say, special dispensation to be able to use a handicap mm -hmm. spot for their purposes. So. Um, so it's um, unlawful for them to use it. And if it's there, they would be fined like any other vehicle. All right, mm -hmm. could you also explain, Patty, what are you going to do now? What is your next procedures? Will you be making that appointment at the Florence Savings Bank to go in there to make sure that somehow that this company is notified that they will be fined if they are caught parking there again? Uh, I'll send a letter to um, Mark at Florence Savings Bank, and um, the bank should uh, deal with them. And if the police are in the vicinity, then they can ticket the vehicle. All right, so probably just a suggestion that wouldn't hurt to also send a letter to our to Chief Russ Sinkowitz in regards to what has happened here, the verification that you have received, so that they would be able to keep a watch on that spot when they're up in Florence. I can CC mm -hmm. that to Russ. Yeah, CC, that's a good idea. And then an Thank update, you, Jim. An update <laughs> on the HP spot near the intersection of Henshaw and Crescent Street. Um, Miriam's doing Oh, Miriam, are you Yes, um, we did the first vote on that two weeks ago on the on-street and off-street handicapped parking spaces. Um, there was some discussion of concerns, which Roy Martin brought up, which we knew probably would happen in regards to that if we did this for one person, would somebody else come forth and have concerns and would want a handicapped parking spot in front of their house? And um, we talked very lengthily on that, and then it was understood that that handicapped parking spot is not for the person that lives in front of that house, it's for anybody, mm -hmm. yeah. okay? And that we in the city can have that handicapped parking removed also. If the person or the couple, the elderly couple, ever move out, <coughs> we can remove that sign. Mm -hmm. So it did pass, all nine counselors voted on it, and we're doing the second reading on this Thursday. Thank you. You're welcome. That's great. Okay, um, and now, um, thank you for coming. Our guests from PBTA will speak on um, changes happening with the paratransit van service. Great, thank you, Tori. I'm Nicole Rowan, Deputy Administrator of Operations for PBTA, and I also have with me Terry Koopman, who is our travel trainer at PBTA. So I didn't know if you had time tonight, we can talk about our travel training program as well afterwards. And if not, you might want to have her come back to another meeting and chat with you about yeah, that. Yeah, probably. We have hmm, maybe um, not that much time tonight, maybe That's about fine. half an hour or 20 minutes. No just problem. Just to get an update from you probably at this time. Okay. Good. Well, it's good for her to come up and meet you and she yeah, come back mm -hmm, to another absolutely. meeting. We have some good stuff going on with that program, so I thought you might want to hear about it. Um, the advanced reservation pilot. So back in the fall, um, we reached out to several rider groups, and I know we were up here in Northampton and met with several of you to let you know that we, um, as part of looking all over PVTA for efficiencies with uh, both fixed route and paratransit, um, one thing that we had run into was the data we were looking at regarding no-shows and cancellations. So for the last couple of years, we made a huge effort on um, enforcing the no-show policy, and as part of that came a lot of counseling to people to let them know what was going on because we didn't want to just shut people off from the services. A lot of people have cognitive issues and whatnot that didn't really understand uh, the impact. Um, and we were able to significantly reduce the number of no-shows that were happening on the paratransit service. But even beyond that, 47% um, 40 of our cancellations were trips that were scheduled eight or more days in advance and 12% of our no-shows were trips that were scheduled eight or more days in advance. Um, so that is thousands of trips that are either on the schedule and then canceled at the last minute, or we actually send the vehicle out and nobody's there to um, get the ride. And there could be several number of reasons for that, uh, but one thing we thought we would do as a pilot 
um, on the reduced amount of advance reservation. So people can still call the day before, up to 4.30 the day before to schedule their ride, but for this pilot from January 2nd to March 31st, they can call up to five days in advance as opposed to 14. Mm -hmm. And again, it's to look at the efficiencies of how that happens. And there's many reasons we wanted to do this as a test. One is, I'm uh, a firm believer that we're not gonna change any policy without getting a whole bunch of feedback from our riders and uh, agencies that use the service. And we wanted to know what worked and what didn't work rather than just change a policy overnight. Can Another, I oh, yes. Sorry. Go ahead, Tori. Um, an interesting um, effect of this has been, um, and I don't know whether this is actually the way that this rule was supposed to be interpreted or whether just certain call takers thought this, but I was also told that I couldn't cancel more than five days in advance. So for example, I took a vacation um, at the beginning of January and I wanted to call on a Friday and cancel all of my rides for the following week so that I wouldn't have to think about it and remember and risk forgetting and having a no-show. Um, and I was told, oh no, you can't do that. You can't cancel more than five days in advance. So I had to cancel some of my rides and then I had to remember to call back in the middle of the week and cancel the rest of them. That is not the case. And Paul Anziano is here sitting right behind me. And I'm oh. sure that he's shaking his head as well. Hi, Paul. <laughs> right. Yeah. In your yeah. case, Tori, you have a standing order. Yep. So at any time, you can call in and put a hold on for a one week, two week, you know, as many days as needed. And so they that it was just probably an error by the call. So if you want to let him know afterwards what day you called or something, he could look into the system to see who you were speaking with. I or actually, you know, to be you know honest, I was. probably don't remember, okay. but um, it was like around the holiday time, but maybe just, just a reminder to call takers. Correct. Yeah. I will do that. Okay. Thanks. Um, so the um, pilot started January 2nd, and um, we've heard back from people. I, I would say it hasn't been a substantial amount of people. Riders uh, basically misunderstood that they couldn't they could still call in the day before. They thought this meant they had to call in five days in advance. And oh. so in talking to our call takers or our staff, once they learned they could still call the day before and that the only restriction was on the out days, they were fine with it. Other people have commented that um, having the weekends, or rather they, could, they didn't want to make two calls in one week and that they would prefer to have at least seven days advance reservation. And they understood that the 14 was probably a lot and maybe cause for the, no sh the excessive no-shows and cancellations, but they, they would prefer to just make one call for the week rather than two calls in the week, which makes sense. Yeah. Um, having to remember to call back was a big concern. And mm -hmm. so we've um, definitely taken that into consideration. Um, a few agencies find it taxing on their staff to make the multiple calls, similar to what riders were saying. Uh, but they were more adamant that they wanted the 14 days. And these are assisted living facilities and dialysis centers. Mm -hmm. um, and personally for me, I mean, we've got to weigh the rider's perspective and the PVTA perspective and the agency perspective. But some of these agencies, if they've got to help us out in some way, I, I would think that would be worth it if we're going to make the service more efficient. So we're, we're taking all of that into consideration. Um, we also went back after the month of January to look at the data to see exactly what was happening. Because one end of the, the other piece that I forgot to mention before Terry, uh, Tori spoke was we not only did we want to hear back feedback from you guys, but we want to hear feedback from our operator to see how it's going on their end. A lot of people were concerned that the call volume would be crushed into one week's time, and how are the call takers going to be able to handle all those calls mm -hmm. within one week? Um, so in looking back at all the data, just for the month of January while this was in place, no-shows were reduced by 10% compared to prior months. Um, so that's approximately 100 fewer no-shows in the month of January. Um, cancellations were reduced by 21% compared to prior months, and that's 1,200 fewer cancellations. And I will add that uh, even though that was 21%, we also had at least one major snow day, which accounted for a lot of those cancellations. So had that snow day not happened, there would have been far less um, cancellations involved. So it would have been more than 21%. But that's expected to happen this time of year. 
Um, and it, remarkably, the call volume remains the same for the weekly totals. So we had, didn't actually double the number of calls or even increase it by 20%. Um, the only problem that we're seeing in our phone um, information is a significant number of calls from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Mondays, which with the five-day um, time frame, you can see that people want to call in right away on Monday and get the call in. And so Paul and I are, are looking at that. He's seeing, to, or maybe already has put somebody else on Mondays. Um, and even though that, that those calls had increased during that time period, the whole time still remained at an average of 55 seconds. Um, and the other piece was January trips had increased by 7% from December, and that's 1,700 more trips. So it wasn't something that we saw as a barrier for people wanting to use the service. Mm. So my reason to come today is, number one, to answer questions you have, to take some additional feedback if you have it, but I really wanted to present the data and let you know where we were. And we'll continue to evaluate the data and take feedback. We have. Um, a voicemail set up and an email set up. Our, our customer service people will take complaints and put them into our complaint database. So there's a number of ways people can get can reach us. We have another, we had a rider meeting last week in Springfield to get feedback and it was similar comments to what I explained earlier about um, they don't want to call more than two days in one week. And that once a couple of those people understood they could still call the day before, they, they were okay with it. Uh, we have a meeting on Thursday, February 28th in Amherst, and actually, Fanny, I wanted to update you on that. We were going to hold it in Northampton, um, but the Amherst area really wants to hear from us, and since we did the initial meeting here and I'm here tonight, we decided to hold that one in Amherst, and we'll be back here in March because we want to talk about it again mm -hmm. and let you know where we're at okay. and where we're going with it. So that's February 28th, the Amherst Senior Center from 3 to 4, and again, it's really just to go and have the same discussion that I'm having tonight and see if anybody has any feedback or questions for us. Um, and we do see this as a potential to um, really have some impact on making the service more efficient. Uh, one thing that we've seen over the last year or year or two is um, capacity issues with our regular senior service. And so by taking some of these cancellations and no-shows out of the scheduling um, should open up the trips a little bit more and make those um, reduce the issue of that capacity, at least by a little bit, and be able to handle more trips. And at a minimum, we'd like to provide the same amount of service um, without increasing the cost, because we actually don't have additional funding to provide uh, more service. So just trying to keep, keep up with everything. Um, and we'll take feedback through March. And um, like I said, we want to touch base with everybody again, let them know how it's going, and then um, let everybody know what our final recommendation is. Uh, definitely everybody's feedback is part of that process and I think you may remember when we did the in-person application process we did the same thing where we did it for a pilot we took mm -hmm. some feedback mm -hmm. we had to modify some things mm -hmm. so uh, one thing at last week's meeting was this isn't just uh, it's either five days or 14 it can be something in between mm -hmm. and maybe it's some kind of compromise where we'll still see some efficiency but not necessarily what we're seeing today with the five day mm -hmm. does anybody have any questions Mm, yes, I want to thank you, your group, because it's not been an easy job. You're not going to make everybody happy. And I know you're trying to do your best, and I want to thank you as a city councilor. I've seen and heard many meetings that have occurred within the past couple of years, and I just think that we're really getting together, we're working as a community, and I think that even with the Committee on Disabilities, right, you were asked to come, you did come for this month, and I want to thank you and commend you for being here. Thank you. We're happy to work with you guys. This is a great committee. <laughs> thank and, you. And uh, definitely appreciate everybody and all the riders. Uh, and Patty's been a great help to PBTA as well, so thank you. Okay. And again, we'll be happy to come back. Terry's got a lot of great information about our travel training program. She might be able to do it. It's only 20 after. How long do you think sure. it would take for Yes? I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's just something that came up at our last meeting. Somebody from the public had brought it up, and I don't know if it's still an issue or just something that I remember, but didn't somebody last meeting say that they have to wait for like an hour to an hour and 15 minutes for the PDTA van? She said she was blind, and she was blind, and she was waiting for the van, and being blind, she couldn't just go in in the morning to a coffee shop or something. 
Somebody um, did say that. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember that. Yeah. Then, yeah. Okay. Is that still an issue? Yeah. Um, it probably depends on the trips. Is it? Are you pointing back here? Are you referring was, to was, was it you that brought that up? <laughs> yeah. Can, can you address that again? Just because it, it stuck in my mind. It's something that, you know, something like I could solve the issue very easily. Just like you said, pop into a coffee shop and get a cup of coffee while I'm waiting. But I remember you saying that that was a problem for you. Is, is it acceptable for a member? We need to open it up to the public. Is that allowed now or, or no? It should have been during open public. Well, it kind of goes along with what we're talking about. Though, I know. Is, or can I ask? Well, because ask right from PBTA. You should be able to get your answer from them. Oh, okay. So is that still a problem for people to wait for an hour or an hour and 15 minutes for a van when they, when they call for one? Or has that issue been addressed by you or by somebody? Um, it sounds like it's probably a bigger question, but I can tell you that we do speak with Fanny directly on any concerns that she in particular has. But uh, so there is a one hour scheduling window mm -hmm. that plays into it. And then there's a 20 minute pickup window. And I guess I don't recall specifically exactly what that particular issue was. Yeah, but is that um, something that a lot of people run into? Or they... I, would not, I would not say that. As a matter yeah. of fact, um, a couple of years ago, the Planning Commission did a satisfaction survey of the paratransit service, which came out very favorably. Um, in addition, we've heard from a whole bunch of agencies about our current contractor and, and what a great job that they do. And for the most part, based on the complaints that we hear from, I don't see that a lot, but do I get it, particular calls like that once in a while, yes. Um, the other good news is right now we have um, intelligent transportation system on the vehicles, which I've talked about before. Mm -hmm. So we get complaints like that, and Fanny will tell you that we're able to look at the system and, and replay, even if it's a couple days later, to see exactly where that van was and what was going on. Uh, either they were stopped somewhere, or they had to go pick somebody else up and, and what exactly happened. We can pretty much see what time, how long they were stopped somewhere. Can we see the speed of the vehicle and mm -hmm. a whole bunch of information. Oh, so we're able to follow up on complaints that's pretty quickly. Awesome. That's great. That's pretty okay. neat. That's good. Patty has a question. Patty yeah, is, um, Nicole, when you said a one hour scheduling window and then a 20 minute pickup window. Right. So what's yeah. the different, what, what is that? Explain each one of those. Yeah. So for ADA services, um, and again, it's not a popular thing, but in order to guarantee all those rides, which we have to do, there are scheduling parameters that we have rules for. So somebody calls in and schedules and requests a pickup time. And we say, you know, say they're going to work or something and they want to be picked up at eight o'clock to go to work. And we don't know necessarily while they're talking to us on the phone how far away it is. So we'll get to that in a second. But uh, we can say, the general rule of thumb is we'll pick you up between 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock. They might still want to just be picked up at 8 o'clock because they're going right down the street. But again, this is how the system works and the rules work, that everybody, even across the country, has this one-hour scheduling window. They might say, I need to be picked up at 8 o'clock, but I can't be picked up before 8 o'clock. So we would say, all right, you could be picked up between 8 and 9 o'clock, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Once we determine what that one-hour time frame is, we give them a 20 minute pickup window and we say, okay, the van's gonna pick you up within this 20 minute window, which would fall within that one hour, which I know sounds a bit confusing. Mm. Um, so the concern comes in for a lot of uh, appointments and that is one thing that we talked to um, several riders about. So the one hour scheduling window is actually based off of the pickup time, not the appointment time. So somebody might say, I have an appointment at nine o'clock in Springfield. But if they live in Northampton, we, the, we're not going to pick them up just in enough time to get them to Springfield. If it takes a half hour to get from Springfield to Northampton, the one hour scheduling window starts the half hour before the appointment. And it builds that travel time in. Okay. So again, we could go on and on. I don't want to confuse the matter more. But um, it is a conversation that the call takers need to have with the riders over the phone as these are coming in. and. Uh, we are working on that with Humes, and Paul's aware of uh, some retraining with his call takers. But for the most part, we generally don't run into that significant as, as of an issue as you raise. But does it happen occasionally? I would imagine, and it's very unfortunate. And, it, and I will say too that it happens with the bus side as well. Sometimes, oh, yeah. uh, you know, bad weather or whatever is going on. Sometimes those buses really do get held up in traffic, or we might have a breakdown, or mm -hmm. or yeah. the worst case. 
not the worst case, but one other thing that happens is the buses, especially up here, can be overloaded and the bus drives by because it's got no other room for somebody even to stand on the bus and those people are waiting. Yeah. So it is unfortunate. So we're doing, and I can assure you Mary McGinnis is doing everything she can to get additional funding for more service and uh, we're hoping that something comes through with that. Okay. Are there any other questions? Thank you. I would suggest that you have a travel training session at one of your future meetings because okay. there is a lot to cover and she does oh, okay. a great job. Right. I think okay. How long years. would it take, Juna? Would it be can, like an hour meeting or? I can no. make it as short as you'd like. 20 um, minutes or okay. so. Okay, there we go, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm saying it wouldn't be an hour. It would, you know. well, no, it would not be an hour. Would you be willing to come back up to another meeting and do say a 20 minute to half hour presentation? Sure. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm just going to add that we did um, in Elder Vision put the article in about, uh, you had sent it up to us. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw a copy of the paper, but thank you. it was in there. Mm -hmm. Great. But well, we'd love to have that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. And I also, so I have some of my notes that I spoke about today. I don't know if you want to copy of that. And I also have the notice for the Amherst meeting. I didn't know if you want yeah, to copy yeah. Yes. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you already have it? Okay. Can I ask you a quick question, Nicole? Do you have the date for the March meeting yet? Mm -hmm. I do not have the date for the March meeting okay. yet. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to get we one get one emails. Those. That'll, that's fine. I'd like to get one of those yeah. for our records too, okay. please. They've been emailing yeah, thank you. When you're done. Set a date. You want the meeting okay. notes too? Yeah, yeah please. The March meeting is going to be in Northampton. Yes. Yeah. So when, when I find out when they schedule the date and time, I'll be sure to notify all the committee members as well as the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. I would say it would be later in March. Okay. Great. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. We can move the next agenda item that we have is a review of the proposed ordinance disability commission. Do you want to say about it right now? Oh, there's nothing to say about it right now? No. Well, that, okay. Uh, do you want to say what happened at the council meeting? That's There's three ordinances right now. Patty, why don't you tell them? I told you about it. Mm -hmm. that, that what you told me on the phone? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. That there's three ordinances that we're looking at some legislative mm -hmm. procedures on it. That's all that's holding it back. Otherwise, it's going to move. In our so once our attorney Alan Seawald, they're having difficulties getting a hold of him. So once he looks mm -hmm. at it, then we'll know. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe we need to vote on it. Should we be voting on it now? Yeah. Ruth, uh, do you have your hand up, Ruth? No. Oh, okay. Right, there's no Sorry. change. It's just what we presented last time. Right. It'll be either removing uh, me as a sponsor, if not the mayor. That's mm -hmm. the legislative part of it right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just an administrator. Right. That's right. due to the, the, the new charter, right? Yes. Right. The charter right. changed it. Yes. We were following an old procedure, and then with the new charter, it, it's You're now, it, 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 rather than going through council, it's actually got to come down from the mayor himself, right? But we've done the work for the mayor to go and say, oh, this looks good. This is my, because we're in service to him. 
rather than the city council. Isn't that how it works? I think that's how we got it. It was my I might have it wrong though. But that is correct. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you <did share>. yeah. <laughs> the big problem was when Councillor Casey came up to me and said, because I told him we had absolutely no money at all. Right. Okay, in mm -hmm. the funds. They were broke. And I said, Eugene, it's pathetic. I said, the committee has no money <coughs> to work with. How much did we have? <coughs> Excuse me. We used to get $400. Thank you. Yeah. It's peanuts. Okay. And anyways, Eugene said, hang in there. Let me do some investigating. And he did. And this is exactly what had happened. If you look back about what, Patty, a year, year and a half ago, when we passed the ordinance, both Eugene and I, we sponsored it. 2012, June 7th, 2012. Okay. Anyways, what had happened was Eugene was working with our finance director, Chris Piles, at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, from here on, like I said to the mayor with Patty in the office recently, I couldn't believe that a finance director wouldn't have picked that up, what caused this problem of this change, okay? Because we voted to accept the Mass Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 8J. That vote was needed in order to make our Committee on Disabilities eligible under another statute to receive revenues collected from handicapped parking mm -hmm. violations. That did it immediately. Because of that Mass General Law in the Section 8J, mm -hmm. we changed the whole procedure. We have to go by state. That's what happened here. Well, we intended, and, nobody, the, and nobody ever picked it up. I think the intention was to go by the state procedure anyway, too. It well, the no, right? because no, our ordinance also our original ordinance was not in compliance. Right. That we did find out. Yeah, what, what started it was um, voting members versus non-voting members, meaning associate members, and that just sort of blossomed into, oh, this doesn't really follow um, state statute. Um, right. Do, do and mean, what happened was, which the mayor explained to Patty and I in the office, that he had discovered this when her and I went in there about what she was talking about, the membership. Okay, how we have non-voting members who were very upset, okay, because they could not vote. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. You know, if they come to meetings faithfully and they can't <laughs> vote, they can speak, but they cannot vote, not unless we have a quorum. Yeah. So that was our concerns with mm -hmm. Patty and I. We went in to see the mayor. So we put this ordinance in place, and that got mm -hmm. shut down by the city solicitor mm -hmm. because of the state laws, the mass general laws. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, this, because of the charter, you're correct, okay? We're going through many ordinances right now, and that's why we're having a special committee from people on the outside who've already been nominated to be on the committee on Wendy Mazna, of going through the ordinances that have to be removed mm -hmm. and be changed, and we're changing them now. Mm -hmm. Like finance committee, we no longer have a mayor, the same thing. Right. You know? It's this a lot is, of work. It is, mm -hmm. and this is what happened to this ordinance, mm -hmm. okay? Of our Committee on Disability Ordinance, because we went into the Mass General Laws, Section 8J, not realizing it, all of us counselors were so concerned getting this money from, you know, fines mm -hmm. on handicapped parking that we changed this committee. That's what happened there. Do, do people feel comfortable um, voting on this? Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to make yeah. a motion to approve this? Yeah. I, I can't because I'm the I chair. Can't well, I can't either. Well, I can. I can make an, um, a motion that we approve. I, well, no. No, no, I'm not talking to you. Okay. I'm sorry, Susan. You're talking to me? Yeah, you're, no, I'm okay. not. Okay. <laughs> I was going to make a motion to approve the ordinance. Um, does anyone want to second that? I'll second that. She hasn't given me a point, but she can still vote. All in, all in favor? Can. 
Who seconded that one? I missed it. I think Gay No, it wasn't Gay. I know, but I don't, I don't know who seconded it yet. <laughs> who seconded it? Gay had her hand up. Cindy okay, had her Cynthia hand up. Cynthia seconded. Yeah, okay. The motion yeah. passed. Yeah. So, <laughs> great. So that will mean that the um, ordinance committee will know we're wherever this ends it. up. Yeah. Right. Um, that the ordinance will support it. That we, that right. And did. then we can start, yeah. once we get the two votes on that, mm -hmm. then we can start taking our vacancies. And that's why apparently the mayor is not doing any movement right now. Right. Because of this new committee now, so called committee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So that we can start taking people and moving them up and great. forming the Commission on Disability. Well, this is great to know now that we can say that the committee supports this. Um, is there other business? Yes. Sam, thank you very much for sending me your application. Oh, yes. Appreciate that. Yes. And yes. hopefully yes. once yes. this new commission is put in place, mm -hmm. we'll see what the yeah. mayor approves and sends yeah. to full city council of his recommendation and then we will recommend it to come to appointments and evaluation. Mm -hmm. So we will bring you, mm -hmm. we'll be bringing you in there. Can I just address sure. this just quickly? I sent that and more as housekeeping between the mayor's office and, and myself. I had a couple of um, things going on with the mayor's office. Yeah. We usually and, get them though because and we're I didn't, on. I didn't want them to think that one thing that I sent on a different topic affected no. my application for right. here. Mm -hmm. So I sent a separate email saying that I was still interested in this and I felt that you should be talking on that. So that's what that was Appreciate about. That. It wasn't being uh, now pushy now or, or anything it's really like that. Good it, was, because it was just to know. make clear that I was still interested in this. Exactly, you. because in appointments and evaluations, we usually talk about, well, mm -hmm. how many more applicants are we going to be getting? Because we have a human, um, the Human Rights Commission, we need to have, you know, applicants on that bedtime. Mm -hmm. Okay, Patty had something. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, in, in speaking with Lynn Nettleman, there are a number of people who have applied since last summer. Um, and okay. so Sam is one. And I don't know all the other names because mm -hmm. I didn't ask for those until it's. Um, I'm going there tomorrow. Yeah, so when, when all of this gets yeah. um, so finalized, and then we would be known mm -hmm. as uh, the uh, Commission on Disability. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are there announcements? Uh, just that, that meeting over in Amherst, which mm -hmm. was uh, Nicole already mentioned. February 28th. Mm -hmm. And did you want to announce the, announce the pneumonia shot? Oh, yes. Um, if anybody here is um, 60 and older and would like a pneumonia vaccine, uh, we will be offering those with the Board of Health tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We have 15 vaccines to offer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, anything else? Or would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? Um, well, if we have a few minutes, um, we, what is the plan <laughs> next month? Can we talk about that, what the agenda looks like for next month Excuse so me. everybody can think about it? Yeah. Thus far for mm -hmm. the agenda in March is Jamie Parent mm -hmm. uh, from the DA's office, uh, Councilor Labarge made that arrangement mm -hmm. to come speak with us. That will be very good. Yeah, that would be awesome. That's with people with disabilities and so forth. Yeah. Cynthia, really you have your hand up? Uh, yes. Um, mm -hmm. I have um, become aware of a new um, new treatment for stroke victims. And um, a friend of mine sent me an article that was in the record, recorder, the Greenfield Recorder. Mm -hmm. And I thought it uh, would... Uh, it would be good to be aware of that, so I'd like to bring uh, the article and explain a little bit about it, if I could, next time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? And does this mean that um, Terry could be speaking at our <laughs> meeting, the travel training person, the meeting after that? Maybe in April? April? What does April look like? I think Jamie Parent in March is probably going to be about 20 minutes. Yeah. 
So, yeah, so we should set up another meeting for the travel for team. Yeah, yeah April, she said that's what, could, maybe, April. Right. maybe we could have um, Terry come in April. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that would be April 16th. We have an appointment January 29th. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is there anything oh, okay. else we should be booking? Stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so can somebody make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Anyone want a second? I'll okay. second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. 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 Yep. All in Aye. favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, that's the most See efficient that's meeting. Wow. Oh my God. We're getting this oh down. Yeah. <laughs> Mine and my son's going to make me feel sick. <laughs> well, hey, Sue, we can chat for a minute. Jim. Oh, these are funny. What about my Is that committee going to get together again? Yeah. No. Uh, I can't. Uh, uh, can't uh, can uh, we haven't gone together. The DA's office. Maybe we should wait yeah. for the bylaws. I got a point of that. That's what I want. That makes sense, because why do the bylaws if everything else might not be done? And that's our point. I think that's what Sue and I talked about. Maybe I forgot. Oh, great. I love it. No, that's a good idea. It's almost like other things that I'm having meetings on. But I have that notebook that you put together with some bylaws for other communities. I have that. But if we're a commission, it might be completely different. Yeah, so we should wait. Well, a lot of some are from the commission. Oh, okay. That's even better. Across the state, a lot of them are in, especially with the get them in there. So they get them in there. That's going to be a lot. But there are a variety of names. That sounds great. Oh, huh? What a great note. What a great. Is that your cell phone? No, that's my PC shutting down. Oh, it's, it's, it's set for Irish tunes. Hey, Roy, we're all done. Hey, Roy! I'm sorry. I apologize. What I, happened, baby guy? I got home from work. I got, went to work at 3 o'clock this morning. I got home from work and I laid down. I said, I'll take a shower. I was the only one.